guys, welcome to Home Sweet Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom to one. And today's video is part two of my Q&A. If you missed the first Q&A video, definitely go and check it out because I answered around seven questions last time and I don't have that many more to answer, but I thought it was best to break them up. So let's get started. My first question is, what is your number one favorite thing about homeschool? And for me, that is the time that I get to spend with my son. That is the most precious thing about it. I feel like we've been given this extra time that these other people don't get to have. And I'm so, so thankful for it. Um, I've been in the public school arena. I've missed those precious hours and now I get to spend every day with him. And yes, we do get on each other's nerves sometimes and he goes and spends some time at my mom's, but we still love being with each other. And I just, it's the most amazing thing. While there are so many other perks to homeschooling, that is my most favorite thing. I'm gonna highlight this so I don't answer this question again. All right, the next question. Do I feel like Gather Round is enough for a third grader? For me, it's very hard to answer the is it enough question because for us and, and in our homeschool and for my son, it is definitely enough. I mean, we're going into our fourth year with Gather Round. Um, we use Gather Round Campfire and math. And so I definitely feel like it's enough for him. We've been using it these past three years. We're going into our fourth year. But it is different to say for a third grader because I don't know your third grader. So um, some questions that I would ask myself, you know, is, is my son a good reader or do, do they need more reading practice? Which you could use Gather Round and add in readers. That's perfectly, you know, normal to do. Does my child need more language arts? Are they struggling in that area? You're really going to have to look at where your child is. I do not want to discourage you from trying gather round. I think it's wonderful. And you may use it with your third grader and be like, yep, this is it. Um, I definitely think that it could be, but you're going to have to look at your son or your, I'm not sure if it's a son or daughter, you're going to have to look at your child and just see. And if they need some extra supplementation in some areas, then definitely add that to it. It does not hurt to add things to gather round because if you really want to try gather round, do it. Um, I would also recommend watching um, Rebecca Spooner's video on Is It Enough? It's an amazing discussion to listen to, and I think it would make you feel so much better. And I also made a video, gosh, I guess it was last year maybe, I don't even know, about how I know it's enough for us. I'll try to link it down below so that you can check them out. But um, definitely give it a try with your third grader and see what you think about it. It's not going to hurt to try it out. Okay, next question. How far in advance do you plan for a unit and what things do you do to prep for one? That's a really good question. And they go on to say, do you have a few things that you know for sure that you try to incorporate immediately, like games, extra art, assigned reading, or are you more just open and go relying on the app? Well, um, really it kind of just depends on the, the mood that I'm in. I am a planner by heart. I love to plan things. I almost like to plan things more than like to carry them out. And so the planning process is so much fun for me. And so like this summer, I've been working on plans for our first campfire unit and then plans for our first gather round unit. And I love having this time to just kind of sit in the unit and just kind of get my feel for everything that's in there. I love to go lesson by lesson and see what my son's gonna be learning, um, what activities they're asking him to do. I love doing that. So sometimes I plan things months in advance, but that's usually only during the summer. When it comes to during the year, um, let's say we're on our first unit, I'm already thinking about our next unit. I'm already looking at it and pulling things for that next unit. I do like to look at it at least a month ahead of time. And then I even break it down and I come back and visit it week by week, day by day. I'm just a planner like that and I like to know what's going on. I don't tend to add too much. You can check out some of my other videos. We don't tend to add a lot of things to our units. I feel like the units are so full of information and activities and ideas that you really don't need to add too much stuff. But you know your kids better. If your kids love sensory tubs and art and music and all those things, and you know it's going to enrich your experience, 
then do it. I mean, I'm all for you trying it out. I know my son's personality and for him, less is more. And so one thing that I always go to is what are we going to read? Um, this year he'll have an independent reader and then he's also going to participate in a read aloud with me because I love reading aloud to him. So those are the first things that I know I'm going to add to it are our read, are like our extra reading. I also love adding videos because that's the way he learns best. He likes to watch videos and things. And so I try to add in videos, not overkill, but just a video here and there. He's not very much into arts and crafts, but I do know it's important to do things like that. So a couple of projects, but usually it's things that are mentioned inside of the unit themselves. So I don't plan too much. I love the Gather Round app, like absolutely love it. And so when I'm starting to plan a month in advance or a couple of months in advance, yes, I have that app open. I go to the, um, the community for that unit and I go straight to those resources because that is valuable. And I always say, if you find something, please share it on there because you can share it with all the other families so they can have those ideas too. So that's kind of my plan in there. I, I do not do very well doing just open and go. It makes me very lazy. And I would notice I tried to do that this past year and um, I was just really lazy. And we would get to an activity that would be wonderful to do with the lesson and I wouldn't have my stuff together. So um, I'm not good with open and go. I have to do a little bit of preparation, just a little bit. All right, next question. Um, do you use notebooking as a core piece of your language arts or is it in addition to spelling, grammar, writing, etc.? So if you haven't checked out my notebooking video, we kind of switched it up with the dinosaur unit from Gather Round and instead of doing the student notebook worksheets, we notebooked our way through dinosaurs and it was amazing. And so you can check out my Let's Talk Dinos video or you can check out my notebooking video. But we loved that. Um, I use it in addition to the language arts and the spelling. We still do spelling. We still do language arts. All that that comes with Gather Round, we do that. So those sheets that were included, we still did those. The notebooking was more or less taking the place of the notebooking page in the student notebook or any of the history or science. I really was just interested in what did my son learn? What did he want to tell me that he knew about this lesson? And we loved it. And so going forward, we're doing a lot more of that, a lot more narration, a lot more notebooking moving forward. So yes, it's in addition to the other stuff that's there. Now you definitely can take that notebooking and you can use it to teach grammar and to work on spelling. You can do that, but we don't do that in our home. All right. Let's see what's next. How do you fill in the gaps that could possibly happen with strictly using unit studies? Or do you feel like you have to, like with the different science and history subjects? Okay, so um, in that video I made a long time ago, I did talk about gaps. But just really quickly, everybody has gaps. It doesn't matter if you went to public school, if you're homeschooled, it does not matter what kind of schooling you had, you all have gaps. And it's impossible to teach our kids everything. We cannot learn everything. And so I don't worry about it. Now I will say it took me a long, long time to let go of that um, because I do want to teach them everything. But you have to just let go of that because if you think of yourself, you have gaps too. I'm even filling in gaps that I had. So just from, from teaching my son through homeschool, I'm filling in some gaps. And so what happens over time, your children are gonna fill in gaps when it's necessary, when they need a certain amount of information to complete a project or to do something at work or whatever it may be, your kids are gonna naturally fill in those gaps. So I don't worry about it. I think that doing unit studies or doing just a, a day of where everything is separate, you're gonna have gaps somewhere because that's just life. Um, and you can't fill those all in. So just um, kind of relax and realize that it's not our job to just fill our kids full of every piece of information there is out there. It's gonna be okay. Now I will say, if you 
do unit studies and you're like, okay, I feel like we could dive a little deeper into this, then don't hesitate to add something to it. It is your home and you can do whatever you want to do for your children. And so if you think, oh, this science topic could be beefed up a little bit, then add a living book. You know, go on that field trip, pull in some more history, whatever you need to do. There's been times that I have went and we've read a little more. You know, I've grabbed a book off the shelf and I'm like, no, I want to know a little bit more about this person. So we'll read a Who Was book. Don't feel like you can't do those things. So no matter what curriculum you're using, there will be gaps and you can just do the best you can. Do the best you can with your children. That's all you can do. Offer it up to them. They're going to take what they want to from that feast and they'll fill in their gaps when it's necessary. I promise they will. All right. Next question. I mean, I could talk about gaps all day long. I could. Um, okay. So this one, this one's almost the same question and I'm afraid it would take me forever on this one too. So I had one person say, what are the pros and cons? of gather round versus campfire. I've actually made a video about how we use them both. And I've kind of talked about that in my video about, is it enough? I'll try to just make sure I link all those videos. But, um, and the other question is, what is my favorite or least favorite part of each curriculum? So first off, let's just say this. It's, while they're both unit studies, so gather rounds a unit study, campfire curriculums is a unit study. While they're both unit studies, they have very different feels to them, very different. And if you talk to people that use them both, you're probably gonna see that. They're, they're different. It's not comparing apples to apples. It's like apples to oranges. They're not the same. Um, real quick rundown, Gather Round is, is sold as a core curriculum, including all your subjects except for math. Campfire is not sold that way. You can use campfire any way you want to. It can be your core, it can be a um, extracurricular, whatever. Um, the way they're written is very different. You have a very living book style on your campfire units and not so much um, with your gather round units. It, it, it's a little bit better come year three, but it's, it's still not the living book style of campfire curriculums. Um, with gather round, you get student notebooks that are like, you get like five or six worksheets and with campfire, there are no worksheets and they give a great explanation about why they don't have worksheets. And so you have to check all that out. You can do that by joining campfire crew. They have these wonderful graphics on Facebook that explain like, why do we not have worksheets and what do we do instead? And so they're completely different. Okay. So when I think about comparing them, it's really hard for me to, but I'm definitely going to link those videos below to kind of show you how we use them and you can hear my thoughts on them. We love both of them. Um, I guess if I had to, if I had to come up with pros and cons, the pro is they're easy. Let's start with pros for both of them. They're both very user friendly. I mean, you honestly could purchase the unit, open the unit up and use it. Yes, you need to gather some supplies. Yes, you probably wanna read it ahead of time, but it's that simple. If you love unit studies and you've tried to make one on your own, they're hard to make. It's hard to bring everything together into a cohesive unit study. And so I'm so thankful that these people put in their time and effort to make these wonderful unit studies. And so, that's a pro. I don't have to make my own unit study. I can go right to them, find something my son's interested in, and bam, it's at my house, and we are ready to do a unit study. So that's definitely a pro. Um, I guess a pro of Campfire is it's a little less expensive than Gather Round, um, unless you're doing the one student digital from Gather Round, which is 1995. You have to buy the family bundle, and so. Campfire is a little bit more affordable. You pay 29, I think it's 29.95 and you get all your levels and um, you know, everybody gets a guidebook. So it's a little bit cheaper, but a con to, if I have to say a con to either of these, the con I guess would be Campfire does not have a print option. So when you purchase that, you have to print it at home or you have to send it off to be printed. So that could be a con for you guys that like to have the print sent to you. And so that's a pro of Gather Round is you can do print or digital. Totally up to you. 
Um, let's see what else. Um, I was trying to think. Uh, I guess if I'm thinking as a person who's looking at both of those curriculums and trying to decide which one to do or which one to try, I definitely urge you to do them both. They're both great. When you get on the Gather Round website, it can be very overwhelming because not only do you have to pick a unit and you have to pick print or digital, there's a ton of extras. There's a lot of add-ons. There's cursive and there's seat work and there's a recipe book and there's coloring book and there's MP3s and it gets very, very confusing. And that's not the case with Campfire. Campfire, you select the unit and you get the unit. And so the websites, there, there's just, there can be a little confusion when it comes to ordering from Gather Round. So I guess that could be a con. This is really hard for me because I love them both so much. Um, sometimes when I do print from home, and Lord help me, it's a me problem because I try to do too many things at one time. And so it can be very frustrating to print the campfire units from home and I usually mess them up every time I print them. And so I do love the pro, here's the pro, I can order print from Gather Round. Now, yes, it is expensive, but it saves me time and it saves me the headache of having to print it myself. So there's that. Um, one more thing, when I think about personally, when I think about a con of Gather Round, my son doesn't really like worksheets. That um, he just, he doesn't show his learning well on a worksheet. I think anybody can fill out a worksheet. You know, give them a little blurb to read, let them answer a few questions. Anybody can do that. But when you actually go to your child and you're like, okay, tell me all you know about whatever. And they have to sit there and process it in their head for a minute, get it all in order, and then tell you in their own words. That takes a little more. That's, that's knowing to me. And so... When we use Gather Round, the one thing that I notice when we do the worksheets is I get very terrible answers. I mean, okay, so they're not terrible in that they're wrong. They're just not very good. <laughs> they're so very good. They'll be like one word, two words. And I understand that probably answers that question. And I could very well say, put that into a complete sentence, but it's still going to be a very mediocre answer. And I want more than that. I want more than that from my son. And so that's what I love about Campfire. There are think tanks to really get him thinking and getting to answer. There are hands-on activities that take what you learned and put it into action. And then there are core connections when you want to do some extra language arts and you want to do some extra history or whatever it included in the unit. And so I just get better answers. And that's why I went to notebooking when we did dinosaurs because I wanted better answers and that's what I got. So I guess those are just, those are some of my pros and cons. If I think of anything else, I'll come back and talk about it later. But that's all I can think of right now. All right, let me make sure I got those. And I think I have one more and that's good because this video is getting awful long, isn't it? Okay, here's my last question. Um, this says, what would you use if you didn't have Gather Round and Campfire? And gosh, is that not the hardest question? Because we love both of those. Um, so I did have to think about it. I had to think about it. And so um, if we didn't have those, or if it suddenly stops working for my son, which is always a possibility because people change. Um, if it stopped, I think we would move in more of a Charlotte Mason direction. Um, I know this school year we're adding in some Charlotte Mason things into our mornings, uh, just like one morning a week, each thing. I'll explain that later. Um, but I do feel like that's the direction that we would go. I love the stuff from Simply Charlotte Mason. I think A Gentle Feast looks fabulous. I've looked at a bunch of different things before because after going to teach them diligently, and listening to someone who works for Simply Charlotte Mason, I don't know. I think we would probably move in that direction. That's probably where we would go because we've tried master books and nothing's wrong with that. We just know it doesn't work for us. We've tried the good and the beautiful and nothing's wrong with that. Just didn't work for my son. So probably something more tailored towards Charlotte Mason. That's where we would go. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about today, please leave it in the comments below. 
Also check out those videos that I'm going to link because those will help you kind of understand my take on is it enough. It'll talk about comparing and how we use gather around and campfire, all those wonderful things. Make sure you check out those videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching.